this administration, if I have to be thankful to our president uh, for something, it's because now you're paying attention. His hate is so loud that now people are paying attention. But things have not changed. I have seen so many families destroyed, so many uh, places that, that are suffering, so many people, so many kids that are suffering without their parents over the 30 years that I have been doing this in the area of New Hampshire. That is not funny. But this administration, their policies are full of hatred towards immigrants. And I have no doubt that that hatred comes from white supremacy, xenophobia, and racism. We have to name it for what it is. I was, I was reading something the other day, and I said maybe I should not bring it to, to the attention of the people in the rally, but I'm going to call it for what it is, and I'm known for just not having a filter. So, I was reading the 10 stages of genocide, and yes, I'm going to use the G word and see if we are not right in towards the bottom of it. One, classification. People are divided into us and them. Symbolization. People are uh, forced to identify themselves. Discrimination people begin to face systematic discrimination. Dehumanization. People are equated with animals, vermin, or disease. Organization. The government creates special groups, police or military, to enforce the policies. Polarization. The government broadcasts propaganda to turn the populace against the target group. Uh, what is your name? Preparation. Official action to remove or relocate people to this. Persecution. Beginning of murders, theft of property, trials, massacres. Extermination. Wholesale elimination of the groups. This, this, this is extermination and not murder because the people are not considered human. Then denial. The government denies that it has so, in my head, we are already in number seven. And if we don't call it for what it is, and if we don't face it, we're going to start, we're going to go back to previous eras that we do not want to go back. This is not the country that I swore allegiance to. This president has made a mockery of the values of our nation. And this has nothing to do with the political party because the other party has been complacent and complacent too. If they do not have the moral courage and the political truth to stand up against these policies, we should vote them out in November. It's about time that we that they stop taking our vote for granted. I'm tired of voting for the lesser of two evil. I'm tired of being used as bargaining chips every time there's something, they exchange immigrants for whatever it is that they want to do. I'm sick and tired of that. And I'm happy and I'm moved that you are all here because we cannot go in this alone. But we are part of your community. This is our community. We live here, we work here, we're gonna be buried here. We swear allegiance to our flag. Our kids that grow up here swearing allegiance to our flag. We're no different than anybody else. Our darling, our, our darling um, representatives in Washington just voted $1.4 billion to fund the detention centers. And supposedly it will help them feel more comfortable. They're still locked out. What they have to buy care if they don't have soap and water. They're still locked out. They're still, this is not our country. This is not the values of our nation. We need to put a stop to all of this. More than 100 Democrats voted for this bill. So I want all of you to call our 
representatives and tell them how disappointed you are and tell them to grow some political courage. You know, it's all about doing the right thing and representing the voices of their people. They work for us. They do not need to start in election mode the second that they take the office. And if they're too afraid to put their values and, and what they stand for at the forefront just to win an election, they are not worthy of the seats that they have. <laughs> this, weekend, this weekend, the rates are scheduled to start in big cities, but they have already started little by little here in New Hampshire. Uh, I want you all to be aware there is a uh, uh, sheet of paper with what you can do. But also, in addition to that, we have rapid response teams, which is if you see rates, you can connect to a phone and just alert people. We're not here to interrupt the work of ICE. As much as I do not like them, they're doing their job. We need to change the laws. And until we change the laws, we're going to continue putting band-aids here and there and fighting for one thing or another. We need to change those laws. So this rapid response team teaches you how to be silent witness. And it's not a, an easy thing to do, and it's not pleasant, but at the same time it gives you an idea of the terror that people live. When I see those those uh, commercials of the, what is it, the protector or animals, whatever, that the poor puppy is not a I think, it, it really infuriates me. It's like these people have more compassion for freaking dogs than they do have for, for human beings. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'll give the puppies money, I'll give the puppies this. Well, we at the same time are locking up the children and we're totally dehumanizing them. We have a protest song in Venezuela, a very old song from the 60s that says, that criticizes the Americans. And they said uh, that in, the, in this country, People train the dogs. They even give them education, uh, so they don't. They train them so they don't bite the newspapers. But uh, the, the employers have been biting the hands of their workers for a long time. You know. So this is just the part of the dichotomy that we face when we come here. That we we have this beautiful idea that this country is full of opportunity and full of everything. You really have to work three times as hard and race is at the center of everything. And whether it's conscious or unconscious, we need to do something about it. We need to examine ourselves because we all have biases and stop acting upon those biases and call people that are so blatantly being racist. Washington last week, we were doing a big, uh, a big action at the Rotonda, Defund Hate, Investing in Law. So Defund Hate means set up priorities straight. Don't look at all the billions of dollars that were just allocated for Homeland Security. And that, that money came out of our priorities, education, hospitals. So instead of funding Homeland Security and all those enforcement mechanisms, they should really put the money you know, in education, in health, you know, help the elderly pay their medical bills, build affordable housing. Do, there are so many needs that we have that should be a priority and we're being, being blindsided by our representatives that keep voting for somebody else's priorities. So call it for what it is. And we need to keep fighting. We need all of our voices. All of our voices. Every voice counts. And let's reclaim our country back and repeat after me. Love, not hate, make America great. Love, not hate.